to Mr. P. Dwarkanath ji, who doesn't need any introduction, Dr. G.P. Rao, Mr. V.K. Singh, Director HR Power Grid, Mrs. Omar Rao, VP Human Resources, Asok Leland, Mr. August Azaria, Associate Director, HR, IBM India. I am really grateful to Mr. Prem Singh, President, NHRDN, Dr. Yogesh Mishra, DMA, Mr. Abhay Kapoor, President, FMA, Mukesh Jain, my dear colleague, Chairman, ISTD, Mr. Alok Agrawal, IT consultant, who is the person we are here to organize this program. I am really grateful that this opportunity has been given to me. And this program is a very important program in today's contest. If you see this post-COVID IR ER framework, though all experts are here, like Dwarkana Ji, I named, plus others, they are top experts of the whole country. They will debate. It is not in my area. But I will only mention, because only two minutes have been given to me, I will also thank Mr. Vish. P. Kulkarni, my national president, NIPA, who has spared his valuable time to be here. After me, he will address for a minute. Now this theme post-COVID, it's a totally a new subject here. It was a surprise for the whole country, for the whole world, and for the HR fraternity. The new definitions and new dimensions had been defined for this HRIR, how to handle this. Now the role of HR has become very, very important here. How to strike a balance between employee concerns, employee feelings, employees called employees apprehension, fear, and balance a big challenge. There's no policies laid down in HR. There are no guidelines. There are no provisions in the standing orders of various companies, establishment, which can advise us how to tackle this post-COVID situation. Well, as a NIPM, I would expect that NIPM plus all my organization, NHRD or FMA or DMA or ISTD, we should also see that what will be a role of our collaborative approach, how to help MSMEs, the small organization, how to guide them. Because these small organizations don't have much infrastructure to how to handle this COVID situation. So I'm really grateful that this chance has been given to me. I welcome and I'm sure this will be a big program, a successful program. Since only two minutes were given to me, I won't take more time and I will request now my wish, my president, national president and I, Mr. Vish P. Kolkarni, to please address and guide all of us so that this program becomes a success. Thank you very much. Welcome, Mr. Kolkarni. Alok, unmute him, Mr. Hmm? Mr. Kulkarni? Yeah, he's there. He's there. Yes, sir. Yeah, good evening to all. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And I congratulate NIPM Delhi chapter in association with NHRD and ISTD for organizing this webinar on the very, very appropriate uh, topic. Post COVID IRER framework. I think we all are worried about it, how the situation will be, how we HR professional can manage. And with this eminent uh, panelist, I don't wish to take time for in this uh, process. I request the organizers to uh, wish all the best and the delegates that have a very good takeaway from this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Kolkarni. Thank you, Mr. Kolkarni. Thank you, Mr. Jain. Uh, Alok, I would request to, uh, once again to mute all. <coughs> Alok. Done, sir. Uh, please, please mute all. Thank you, Mr. Kulkarni. Uh, now I have the pleasure to bring in our moderator and the panelists. Before I do so, while Mr. Kulkarni and Mr. Jain have set the contest, let me tell you the reason why five bodies have come together on one single subject. That's because the members have given a feedback that at the company level, organization level, irrespective of the size and sector, the things that are bothering, if you see function-wise, ER and IR 
fraternity has been bothered with the maximum. The impact has been the highest, be it in the workforce management, workplace management, work content management, balancing between continuity and compassion, boundary management. So everything boils around to managing the relationship, industrial relations, employee relations. So we thought we get the best of the people. We have chosen the faculty and the panelists from different sectors. We have taken one from the public sector, one from the multinational company, one from the private sector. And to moderate the session, we have taken the best that is available in the industry. So may I now introduce our moderator first. Can we have the slide on Mr. Dwarkanath? Yeah, Mr. Dwarkanath, as you know, is currently the group director, Human Capital. Can we put the focus on Dwarkanath Garu? And uh, he was still recently the chairman of GSK Consumer Healthcare. And he, everyone knows he worked with GSK for long, long years in different capacity and finally as the director HR. And so far the professional bodies are concerned. He headed most bodies to name a few, National HRD Network, DMA, he was the regional president of All India Management Administration, he was the treasurer of All India Management Administration. He is an advisor, mentor and host to several of us in the industry. Thank you, Mr. Dwarka, for agreeing to join us and also moderate the session today. Now I'll introduce the panelist. First is uh, Augustus. My friend Augustus, he is the associate director with IBM. Uh, his passion is to work on the future of work. Uh, he's working towards engaging the employees to cope with the growth as well be prepared when things change for good. He's passionate about our people development. He's a wonderful person, wonderful speaker, great professional. We'll have a great contribution from Augustus. Welcome, Augustus. Thank you so much, sir. Then I will introduce Ms. Uma Rao. She is the VP HR of Ashok Leland. Uh, many of you uh, would see that she is your alumnus. She is from this Tata Institute of Social Sciences. She worked in different industries, IT, manufacturing, telecom, FMCG, like TCS, IDEA, HPCL, IBM, us. You would have seen that she has worked in private sector, public sector, uh, multinationals, uh, all three sectors he has worked. So that's a wonderful combination of experience, Uma. Welcome, Uma. Welcome. And finally, we have Mr. Vinod Kumar Singh. Uh, he's the director HR of Power Grid, one of the Maharatan companies. See, he has grown in Power Grid. So he considered himself as a business enabler and he strived to make Power Grid the best working place. And the alumnus of uh, XISS Ranchi, and he, in power grid journey, he was a part, he was instrumental in various accolades and awards bestowed to power grid. Welcome, Mr. Vinod Kumar Singh. Welcome to you. Welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, Dwarkanath Garu, so, uh, no, this is fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. Uh, I welcome myself. So, I always enjoy curating uh, these kind of initiatives, bringing the best professionals, best bodies together. So a little uh, things about the format. Uh, Dwarkanath Garu will take over and moderate the session with these three panelists. While he does, now the audience, uh, you can use the chat box for sending your comments. But if you have a question, please write Q, capital Q and write a question. If you write a simple question, it will attract the attention of the panelists. If you write a long question, people think you have written some chat. So please write simple questions. And uh, at some stage, we have also got a poll. Please participate in the poll, very simple poll. We want to get your voice, your perspective also. So these are the two rules of the game. Keep yourself muted, muted. That will help us, including the panelists. You can mute yourself whenever you want, you can unmute. With that context, with that background, with that hope, with that faith, over to our P. Dwarkanath. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, good afternoon to everyone. At the outset, I would like to thank all the professional 
bodies who have hosting this event today and thanks for inviting me as well as my dear friend dr gp rao who has been inspirational and instrumental uh, in coordinating these aspects and his energy is full of energy and his high humility that's why he refused to introduce himself nor allow this slide to be present uh, here i i just want to pick it up what the gp has said i think uh, what i want to at the outset tell is coming from my heart uh, being associated with the uh, two associations very actively and as a life member of the many other associations perhaps this is a historic day and unique opportunity for professionals from hr fraternity to come together under one umbrella and what brought this is the crisis i think the covid situations otherwise i have very we have made attempts many times all of us have made efforts but did not rectify the way it should be this demonstrates how teamwork collaboration adoption agility and alignment would help the leadership and the hr fraternity to come together to make this happen so this is my very heartening to me and i am sure that all fellow professionals viewers participants who are sitting here would also feel the same way i wish these office bearers uh, you already been named to the, thank them and also continue to keep doing so my dear friends my first point is uh, this is unprecedented situation nobody expected is on i mean no one has experienced it in last 100 years but it just happened right i think if you keep on thinking about it how did it happen or oh, does it hurt me personally my my job my business my people my family my health and safety you will keep on worrying i think we while we take uh, all the precautions the most important thing is that the focus of this uh, uh, this the joint host is to create this ir er framework which i really commend it is not just the talent the key talent or or top leadership they are talking here about mali to malik i think you know it is not just in the managing directors business leaders leadership team or together but i think this is the need of the hour everyone sh should come together beyond call of duty and make this happen so this is the team in which uh, i think the construct on which we are doing we have a we we would like to make it a very exhaustive at the same time interactive session give opportunities to viewers to ask some questions as gps alluded earlier also to see that to cover uh, the aspects which i think has relevance to it i mean there could be many but it, due to paucity of time we will not be able to do it but i am very fortunate to have a very versatile and a distinguished panel here uh, who has got a, 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 a varied experiences and i just want to start from saying we are not here to give any gyan no sermons but here we are here to share families to share some experiences in an interactive manner some of them anecdotes some of them talking from their insights and as you know crisis cannot come with a calling card crisis comes this crisis nobody anticipated there are some challenges which may foresee you can react with this something nobody has foreseen um, we didn't know when it was happening in china but suddenly crept up before you realize many things have happened but i think you know this is where the challenge lies in this is where as has been very rightly alluded by mr dinesh jain in the beginning hr and ir er plays a very key role i am not worried about the nomenclature those whoever deal with the people's ma management right from the top from mali to malik is something which you need to uh, collaborate work together and do something beyond call of duty which is unprecedented in nature this is my top line submission while we are doing it so uh, there is a psychological emotional aspects of workforce so the basically we are going to touch on three three aspects work how what is the nature of work will happen is it normal new normal or revised normal what normal or is it something will go back to it or what kind of workforce will have 
and you know uh, when they work with the adoptive remote working or a digital working or physical working how do you manage it third thing we want to see is how will be the future of work will be and you know what kind of work what kind of people uh, which 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 will have it in the future so i think you know this is the focus the biggest challenge uh, before i ask the families to do it is how do you balance between lives and livelihoods this is the challenge we have this is where hr plays an important role uh, and try to energize and try to activate facilitate uh, people and the second bit is how hr can make the business continuity going on by sustaining the business cash management is important um, a good balance sheet is important at the same time the people's morale people's safety well being both emotional and physical is important so this is the challenge we have i think we need to see take it not as a threat but an opportunity to go it. so this is in this is my opening comment which based on which uh, culture management is important what is the competencies of leaders especially in the field of ir er these are some of the things which we would like to seek the views of our uh, panelists there is no particular specific order in which i will try to seek the views and the comments of the distinguished panelists but i thought for the sake of convenience we are going in an alphabetical order so in the process we have mr agustus who who is uh, working with uh, ibm over 20 years with a lot of experience and he has worked in a both joint venture public private and other businesses so would be able to throw uh, some light on this uh, mr agustus uh, my uh, my question on behalf of the panelists sir is uh, this due, due to this covid situation have you noticed transformation change i think change management will become important as you know uh, in workforce workplace and work content if so can you throw some light from your aspect absolutely uh, thank you uh, so much uh, mr dwarknath and uh, i'm truly delighted to be here this afternoon in front of 217 of my hr fraternity from across the country or maybe from outside the country too um, so uh, that uh, my sincere thanks to nipm nhrtn and the uh, management uh, associations to have us here so uh, straight off um, i will have to tell you that um, you know while we are in a very difficult uh, situation uh, i want to tell you a very quick anecdote you know uh, one of it was what drew me to hr from a erstwhile sales and marketing background and that was passion for people and uh, as i've been reading various annual reports you know i would see uh, in 10 point this written people are our asset in 10 point and now with covid that is come to the cover page of the annual report where people are our biggest asset and rightly so organizations went went about enabling their people to journey the new abnormal and then to emerge into a new normal so what happened here is that there was a lot of change that happened people had to adapt to various practices and behaviors and uh, needless to say there was a lot of stress also in the system and uh, at this point in time nobody either in hr or business were we ever trained for a situation like this so a lot of us had to uh, had to go down and dive deep into what we knew and also work by instinct okay so that brought in a lot of innovation and change you know for which we were actually trained in some way but you know the the situation that we were in uh, was just right for bringing about that change and collaboration and things like that there were a lot of heroic stories also during this time where or where uh, uh, remote teams you know enabled businesses to continue working how our banks were functioning with people being remote how the entire economic system was 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 moving thanks to india inc that made it happen so there was a lot of change there then at about that beyond the call of duty was the employer's responsibility in terms of what i would call the duty of care duty of care 
what is the duty of care according to tort laws you know it's a legal obligation basically that's imposed on an individual or an organization where they will be providing standard or reasonable care to their people all right and while we've all been committed to taking care of our workforce and things like that the duty of care also through a lot of other challenges in terms of people's emotional well-being okay and why is emotional well-being so important so with that came uh, the uh, other things which were game changers for people and uh, and helping people what i would say is look at not your situation now but envision the future envisioning the future in the new ways of working or what will be the new normal continue as an employer with your duty of care then apart from this what has happened is that this is not a stoppage of work that has happened this is a pause you pause to introspect you pause to gain perspective you pause so that you are strengthened to move forward so this was a great time for us to do those kind of things then envisioning the future the other practices and behaviors for the new normal is stay calm be pers purposeful and not reactive stay calm be purposeful and not reactive and then i talked about pause then the organization or as well as the individuals had this opportunity to be honest and direct okay to be effective build resilience in the system as we go forward i will talk more about you know emotional uh, uh, content and uh, i will also talk about how we build covid resilience thank you very much dwarka sir please unmute uh i very well said i like the word you said stay calm and pause i think the one of the characteristics of a good leader especially coming from our background where looks after the people management it is you need to be calm in crisis and i know for the best example for me always is uh, ms dhoni i think you know if you get panic rest of people also will get there is a fear psychosis people are worried about safety and health and many other things i think this pays away so i think you very well captured it reminds me before i switch to uh, mrs uma it reminds me to just to go take away my factories take away my warehouses take away my financial leverage but leave my people i will deliver another company in next 5 years you know many people have said it in the in the context alfred sloan or many ones board and so on but i think the most important aspect here is when you when when it when you move into this direction as you said collaboration uh, uma umagaru the question i i want to seek your views and comments sir a culture always is strategy for breakfast as the saying goes how it be a employee relations because you have a very very um, a diverse background being in fmcg being it in public sector and working for a huge organization uh, with induja group ashok leland which is a very onerous and responsible and accountable job uh, how er can play a strategic role in ensuring business continuity coupled with sustainability through innovation or enhanced productivity and cost efficiency i know this is a loaded question but i think the way you feel convenient in next 3 to 4 years try to make an attempt but i think you know it's important what is the thinking what is the purpose uh and how you are managing and motivating huge workforce which is being a brick and mortar company with you know lot of casual migrant labor and all other challenges and and being depending on the msms so for the time being if you can focus on this we'll come back on the migrant laborers and msme sector a little later some of our viewers may be interested but can you throw some light on how you have done your based on your experiences and insights especially the last 3 4 months yeah uh, thank you sir and thank you to the management bodies here and thank you gpg for having me over um this question is uh, really loaded and i think it can have many ways in which it can be answered or looked at perhaps 
um, I will be talking about, uh, you know, our experience with regard to this, as you said, in the last couple of months. I think uh, uh, definitely uh, employee relations or industrial relations, whichever way you call it, plays a very strategic role in the continuity of the business. So when this crisis hit us, for example, I think uh, the, the biggest uh, challenge was not so much in the administrative offices, but was more in the in, uh, factories and units and R&D center, et cetera, you know, where we had to quickly decide what needed to be done and what should not be done at this point, given so many kind of guidelines that the government had given. So I think uh, we formed that emergency response team at every unit and they, uh, you know, consisted of people from the safety, security, HR, as well as the manufacturing to look at uh, what are some of the key aspects that have to be quickly addressed uh, due to the situation. One is some of the process industries, as you know, some of the equipments cannot be shut off immediately. It takes some time for it to shut down as well as to start. So we had to look at some of those things very carefully. Second thing, most important was, as you said, the people. You know, what happens to the people? I think at, at the cost of everything, you know, we decided that we will have them uh, work from home as the government wanted, but not just leave it at that. We created a very constant uh, touch point with all of them, uh, and as, as well as the union leaders, so much so that many of them used to send messages back to me saying, uh, ma'am, we are fine, don't worry about us, etc. So I think this rapport that has been created over a period of time, the relationship and the culture that's there, that really came to the fore in a crisis like this, where they were more than willing to actually, uh, you know, be with us and, and work with us. So the first task was to take care of the people and, and make sure that everybody is fine. For our sales offices, et cetera, a lot of people were on the field. So, you know, many of them wanted to go home because they were all panicked about what happened. So facilitating a lot of them to move out, uh, bachelors who were staying, you know, getting them out into some other safe place because a lot of owners did not want to keep people over there. So all these things actually were the first response that we tried to create. The second thing we, we saw is, you know, there was a great merit in going as a partner with the employees at the units rather than doing it all by ourselves. So we created this wonderful cross-functional team and we were together looking at safety messages, health messages, you know, how to conduct yourself at this time, etc. So all that really helped because when the workmen also started uh, partnering with us, there was better buy-in from the unions and things like that. So that was something very good. The other thing we created was a lot of trust and transparency. Again, going back to the issue of culture. See, in, in a crisis like this, you know, everybody is groping. As you said, nobody ever knew what, is, what has hit us. But I think it was uh, what took us through this time beautifully well, I would say, and touch wood on that, is because we had a lot of trust and transparency in all our communications and the continuous communication. They say in a crisis, you must con communicate 10 times more than what you do in normal times. And I think we took that very seriously and we kept doing this. So some of these things helped in keeping the safety net around people. And that was the first step. From there, when I moved to your question of uh, you know, beyond business continuity to sustainability, et cetera, I think uh, what happened in this time is gave a lot of time for us to reflect. The total lockdown time gave a lot of time for us to reflect as to how we were doing our work, how could we have done it better? How can we do it now? And I think, you know, we've been looking at a lot of our, the way our contracts are structured, the way our work is structured, whether it is giving us the kind of productivity and engagement that we're looking for. For Ashok Leland, I think it's not just productivity, which is very important in any case. It's also engagement of people. So we track it through the total employee involvement index. And that was also very important for us to know the mood of people and whether they are fully into this game that we are uh, into. So the, I think that also helped a lot in relooking the way we were working, restructuring our contracts, understanding you know what is it that are, our employees should be doing, what is it that we should outsource and things like that. So that actually is going to help us a lot in terms of our productivity and cost efficiency. You know, in a legacy organization, sir, a lot of people just keep doing things for the, you know, out of habit more than anything else. Crisis like this actually helps us to pause, stop, and actually think about 
what we are doing, how we are doing, and how we should be doing. So we took all of those steps now. Today, we are doing a lot of work around restructuring the way we are working so that it gives us efficiency, gives employees more comfort, and at the same time is increasing our productivity. The final thing on this would be on innovation. I think alongside efficiency and productivity, obviously, you know, Ashok Leyland is one company which continuously invests in improvement of processes. We have this mega uh, event every year, which is known as Improve, and people actually present what they have done very well. And I'm sure some other organizations do that. But this is a continuous process, one in which we work on process excellence, Six Sigma projects, we have black belt projects, etc., happening, which is continuously leading us towards thinking in a very different way than a normal way. So I think some of these things have really helped us to put the safety net, as well as look at how to become efficient. Obviously, like most other companies, we've also been hit financially. Cash flow isn't an issue for us as much as any other company. So I think it was a great opportunity for employee relations team in this company to step up to actually make things a lot better for, for us as an organization. So I think uh, those were some of the which actually helped. Thank you. Thank you, Uma. It's a very comprehensive. I know it's a very loaded question, but you covered all the facets of what has been asked for and shared some of your insights. And it's a great thing to see with such a huge workforce where they are, or they say your supply chain and so on, you have managed to keep the ball rolling and with the help of your ER team. Uh, kudos. I think, you know, uh, uh, it reminds me one of the one of the things, you know, when we're talking about the ER and IR, I know the questions keep coming, HR is, should be merged and all. According to me, there is no difference between HR and ER. Let us not talk IR as a, as a only blue collar, labor management, those days have gone. I think you, you can have a unions in the, in the white collar. I've, I've seen work in the hospitals, doctors were on strike, pilots were always in strike many times. You know, so this is nothing new, only the whole paradigm has shifted. I think we need to understand one thing before I go to Mr. VK Singh, based on what uh, Uma, or Mrs. Uma has said it just now. I think we need to understand, you know, if you recall, I just want to bring back all our HR professional back to one Maslow theory of hierarchy of needs. If you see Maslow theory of hierarchy of needs, we were now we're talking about self-actualization, self-esteem and self-actualization. Now, ultimately, today, what you're saying, you're sitting at home, covering your ground, take care of your health and family health, which has become the physical and safety needs more than the belongings or uh, esteem or self-actualization. See, this is the paradigm shift has happened. When people are talking about VUCA world, nobody took it as a, it's okay based on the army world, the American army concept to our college concept. It was started about 30, 40 years. We've seen once or twice, but we never realized that will become a, a certainty. These things come without any calling card. There's no calling. It happens. You need to manage it. So this is where it's important. Now let me switch to Mr. VK Singh, very seasoned, very uh, professional, with great, a rich experience in public sector, handling the Maharatna. I think, you know, I like his sense of pride for the organization, which is very important because Uma has touched upon the trust you have to create and you need to be proud about your organization, what they're doing. This is a culture and the purpose and centrality of the theme of any organization because balance sheets sometimes can keep going. As long as you're able to sustain it, I think you need to focus on people. But I think let us hear the experience of how he managed this COVID uh, in terms of his culture, in terms of the cost efficiency, in terms of enhancing the productivity and make the things going because this is in a very essential services. If they have not done it, we will not be getting the power. Um, and that's very important in the given context, but how they could make things normal in a new normal condition. Go over to you, Mr. Singh. Can you please, sir, highlight with your rich experience and anecdotes, some of the issues, how you are strategically done in these aspects? Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for joining this uh, great group. 
uh, normally when you write people are your asset your success depends on strategy of relationship basically strength of relationship define your relationship uh, we in parget we are in a transmission company and uh, and largely the transmission and telecom company so our operation had to continue on 24/7 basis so we did not have much reflection time although we knew the covid is coming coming to the country and so we had prepared we had our plan in place the business continuity plan because uh, we could not afford actually the initial lockdown it started before lockdown started we moved on it platform being a government sector we were not much into the uh, it platform i mean uh, we moved everything on we all our start, all our operations especially decision making and communication were flowing communication was already there but decision making platform were uh, migrated to the online process. so and uh, the the most important thing for us was creating a uh, creating a safe place being safe place is the most important and being brave actually we realized that it's time to uh, see the safety well being and uh, health of the people and we decided uh, as an hr uh, we'll go for not hard hr policy we'll we'll re revisit this is our policy and we need to go beyond uh, our policies and protocol help help all people in need and uh, that way the organization came in a big way we immediately when pm cares fund came we contributed 200 crores we asked our employees to contribute they contributed more than what we Uh, i mean uh, we had sort only one day salary they placed in for much more than that and in our csr uh, thing we almost uh, spent about 30 crores in tar india uh, spending on distributing ration distributing food distributing ppe even buying ventilator of uh, hospital equipment and what not and this operation was tar india almost at more than 200 location we were distributing uh food and ration not on and immediately what we did uh, uh, our agency labor especially security sanitation watch and ward and uh, horticulture and all the important agency uh, worker we took them inside they were earlier really outside the premises we took them inside it inside provided them food so we i mean they were the front line worker for us because country was in lockdown and we had to continue with our operation so we bring them not only we bought them inside we paid them extra wages also i mean most of the companies have not paid or uh, did not pay but we paid extra wages for the first lockdown period uh, that was to motivate them and uh, i mean fear, there was a big fear and panic and anxiety in the uh, people's mind and there was turmoil and trauma so the, to uh, to reduce that we were paying extra wages took them inside give them food and uh, that is how our care started actually uh, and uh, and we did not have time i mean being in a power sector and transmitting power on 24 into 7 uh, your operation had to continue so we made a all plan so that we focus on from routine we move to strategic so that power flow continues we and uh, Yeah, at that when the covid struck us we had almost 31000 crores of transmission works in hand and almost 15000 of migrant labor that was with us at that point, at initial point of time and believe me because we, we took them inside we were giving them food at our sites and uh, retain with us we could retain more than 70% of this 15000 labor because we took care of them and because we provided them food and all possible sanitization masks whatever health uh, health requirement we provided them and moment the is uh, started we could continue with our construction work imagine 31000 crores of uh, project had we not cared we would have lost these people these, these people would have migrated back and we could retain the more than 70% of the workforce uh, that to migrant labor that's a big credit actually and uh, yes it And, it is uh, was, please go ahead uh, that was the initial start okay and uh, as far as i mean the covid the measures realized that you need to revisit all your policies 
all your procedure, all your system, and you really need to redefine them because uh, the same way we could not continue. We had to find out new ways to doing things. And uh, and unfortunately, crisis is the time of opportunity also. In a crisis time, people are more alert, more attentive, more caring, and uh, we could build a very strong relationship. Although we already have, I mean, I tell you, many of our unions, they were uh, distributing ration on their own, on, on behalf. I mean, on their own, they were distributing, and they participated in the larger exercise we did all across India. I tell you, we have touched more than two lakh people in terms of distribution of food, and uh, all our employees came out, helped us, and uh, uh, that was a one part, but uh, making that our organization is safe. I told you earlier also, yeah. being safe was the most important thing. So whatever possible uh, in terms of sanitization, mask and all, uh, we provided to employees, uh, not only to employees, but to agency labor, but to migrant labor. And that's why we could continue, we could continue with our operations. That's why my initial statement. I'll well, speak well, on whatever comes next. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's very heartening to note. I think it's very important for the viewers and the delegates to understand. This was one of my concerns. And uh, you have very well um, uh, summed it up. And uh, thanks, for, thanks to you, your leadership and your team and the organization for really taking care of the labor. I think all the three panelists have addressed very, very succinctly and uh, very, uh, at the same time, covered the points. But I think it's a one thing, uh, one common fabric is coming out of it. Everybody is talking about the care. I think, you know, taking care of the people, that is what first thing, you know, which survival, how to survive. I think people have supported it. They've gone beyond the rules. There is a famous book by Mark Buckingham has said, first break all the rules. I think this is a situation you can't talk about section 9A or, uh, you know, uh, about a lockout or lockdown. I started my career with a lockout, but I'm ending my career with lockdown, which was never anticipated. So I think, you know, this is one message to people. So, uh, you know, just to build on this, because you touched upon the migrant labor. This is one area which has been neglected by the organizations, by the government, by the agencies, by the professionals. It's very unfortunate how they have been going from helter skelter, seeking help to move to their hometowns, how many people have supported, how many organizations have helped. In the given context, I think it's very heartening to hear what Power Grid has done in the trying sums. You're, you're all done it. It's not in the rule book. I think sometimes when you attend these seminars, you can, is there any rule is required to make work from home? Yes, you need to have a broad guidelines, but there is no one size fits all. I think each one has to take its own uh, frame of rules, which suits the employees, suits the organization, helps the employees as well as hence enhance the productivity. That's how I put it. Just coming on this, um, Umagaru, I just want to, since you talked about, uh, Mr. Singh has talked about the migrant labor. Before I go to M M Mr. Augustus, I just want to touch upon you. Do you think unions will have any views or objections, people coming, working from home? Do you think they lose their importance? Uh, sir, it's a very new phenomenon. Nobody is used to it. So certain yeah. degree of anxiousness will always be there. But I think, you know, it all boils down to the same thing that you said earlier, the culture of an organization and the history that it has had over a period in time. You know, if they feel like, if they feel that you are trustworthy as an organization, then they will not worry about it. In fact, I have a different problem at our place. And today, everybody wants to come to the workspace. And there are restrictions, as you know, in some places of yeah. percentage of people working. So they are actually calling us to say, what can we do? You please tell us, you know, because we want to support you at this time. We want to make things happen. We're flexible and all kinds of things like that. That I think is a testimony to the way you have developed a relationship over a period in time. That even though there are restrictions, they still want to come and contribute in some way. Uh, that I think has been, uh, uh, you know, like what Mr. V.K. Singh said, we did a lot of community service around our factories. In fact, our factories became community kitchens. And we were catering to 1,000 to 2,000 people, uh, you know, every day for food, to hospitals, etc. A lot of these, uh, you know, employees uh, who are workmen actually came and helped. 
voluntarily wanting to do things on behalf of the company. I think, mm -hmm. you know, we feel very blessed that we've got a workforce like that, but it wouldn't have happened just like that. So are they anxious? Yes. I mean, you see, every day you open the newspaper, you read some things, which are somebody is cutting staff, somebody is reducing salary, etc. Definitely. But to, to our credit, again, they have not reduced a single rupee of their salary till today. Even the non-working day settlement we've done has been full. Uh, yeah, maybe everybody cannot afford it. For us also, it's tough. But this is the investment we want to make to have a brighter future. Okay, uh, thank you. Well said. I think one of the key messages which come before I just move to Mr. Augustus, he is the one of the key takeaways apart from wellness and uh, you know that emotional connect, calling beyond duties, which is coming out very clearly, the culture, I think culture cannot be developed in one day is a long-term investment. Uh, you know, when you start building it with a purpose and a value-based approach, that will help you in the crisis. I mean, see this case of both Power Grid and Leyland, Ashok Leyland, which is a classic example where the culture of the organization has helped them, the leadership helped them for the employees to come and volunteer saying, look, we are here. They are not running away. There are cases where people said, will not cooperate, not because only of the fear, because you never looked after them well and you are trying to seek their help and they may not like this because there is a lack of trust deficiency. This is what it is. Now coming to Mr. Augustus, uh, you know, one of the aspects, you know, which uh, you need to, uh, we need to consider perhaps is, I think, you know, if as the saying goes, you know, uh, it, uh, you know, if you want to have the development, you know, I think it talks about multi-skilling and in, in enhancing the community. What is this development which you need to look about the people? We have talked about the cost, we talk about productivity, but what kind of people's development in a, in a short summary, if you can help us based on the IBM experience, which is a global company, uh, because that is the key and the need of the hour. How we are in, in improving that uh, upskilling or right skilling at this stage? Sure. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, so, uh, what happened is the COVID nineteen pandemic, uh, you know, was a catalyst to create resiliency for us through a framework of three things: policy, practices, and perspectives. Okay. So because we found that, okay, the work from home was making uh, the work and home blurred. Okay, we don't know where work ends, where home ends. And uh, primary to this uh, in terms of training for people was in terms of their behavior to adapt. Okay, and this we found very, very uh, quickly and early in the cycle within 48 hours uh, of uh, this whole announcement about work from home that the government made. Uh, we had 99% of our workforce completely enabled working from home. And uh, how did this happen? Uh, this happened only because people were trained also to expect the unexpected, okay? Now, coming to your other question of skills. So that was the foundation, you know, they had this resiliency to adapt and adopt. The other one is, you know, a lot of our learning since 2018 was digital. It was all delivered digitally. So uh, the content that we had curated through uh, our own experiences as well as from the marketplace uh, clearly addressed what our employees wanted about the skills that we needed to equip them for the future. And you would also know that just before the COVID, you know, we've, we've gone through a huge uh, strategic shift. IBM, you know, has been uh, known to be a hardware company. But in the last few years, we moved into services and today we are clearly a cloud and analytics company. All right. And, and therefore, we had to uh, go through this journey only through change management and to equip our people with a set of skills. How did they know what set of skills that we, they needed? What behaviors has to uh, happen out there? So we embarked on a jam, employee jam, you know, in terms of crowdsourcing. We said, who better to identify what should be the principles than our own employees? So employees went, all 300,000 employees across the world, went and jammed over. 
that into a set of values and a set of practices and a set of principles that people went through. Okay. No, thank and you. Then, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, no, you, if, if you can just come, yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. So, so with that, you know, what happened is that once people started getting it and as we were de uh, delivering digital learning, uh, engagement went up because people now, the managers really didn't have to chase them into classrooms. The learning went up, engagement scores went up. And I'll tell you what was core to this was the spirit of appreciation, culture. People went around appreciating other people's work and therefore, this built a lot of camaraderie in the organization. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's very well put. It, Mr. Uh, uh, yes, please. Yeah, this is GP. Yeah. Uh, with your uh, permission, please can go we ahead. go to the participants and ask them what is bothering them in terms okay. of a challenge? Can we do a quick poll if you permit? Yeah, sure, sir. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Alok, uh, let's do a quick poll with the audience. Yeah, audience, uh, get ready for a poll. Uh, there are 10 uh, options. You can choose maximum three. Please uh, start doing it. These are all challenges to the IR, ER function. So choose the top three in your mind. Each one should participate. Panelists, sorry, cannot participate. <laughs> <laughs> Panelists okay. have to answer. <laughs> yeah, you have to see what is uh, yes. bothering and the top of the mind. You know, you see, uh, we have to address the SME sector. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, come back. Industries yes. of different sizes, uh, different product lines. So, so that's why we thought we will ask them. So, so that no, at some stage you can cover those. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So now, uh, so far. 76 people have voted, 85, 89, 93 people have voted. Ah, wonderful. So, okay, 49%. I'll, I'm seeing the percentage wise. If 60% yeah. vote, I'll think it's a good polling. 56% <laughs> have voted already. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. You see. 57, 59%, uh, everybody. So nice of you participants. You are involved participants because it is bothering because you want solutions. Absolutely. 61%. Uh, okay, I will stop at 70%. My, I'm raising the bar. <laughs> and 70% people vote, I'll stop. Okay, quick, quick. I'm going to stop in another 10, 15 seconds. <laughs> Wonderful. 65% people participated. Ah, wonderful. It's going, the emotional wealth is leading. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. 67. Uh, business continuity is coming nearer. Boundary management is not that important. Let's see how it comes. I'm giving you early poll results. When I six six seventy percent, I'll stop. Sure, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll now counting. Quick one. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I am ending. Sorry if people who are not uh, participated, but uh, we got. Uh, 75% people have participated. So this is the result now. I am, uh, can you see the results, audience? Can audience, are, uh, are you able to see the results? Please write S, yes. oh, audience cannot see. Yeah, somebody writes S. Yes. Ah, yeah, many people are writing C. Oh, they have seen the results, Dwarka. Uh, yeah, panelists, you. uh, for your kind information, uh, the top, uh, challenge is emotional wellness, health and safety. Yep. Panelists. Uh, yep. Second one is business continuity and cost management. Uh, this is what. And uh, the third one is uh, balancing between lives and livelihoods. First one is emotional wellness, health and safety. Uh, business continuity and cost management. The third one is balancing between lives and livelihood. Mm. And uh, 
So these are the top one. So find them. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So I Keep hope everybody has seen. Friends, yes. I'm stopping it huh, with your permission. I'm stopping it now that you have seen the results. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very thank much, you, Thank you, sir. I, Over I'm to you, sir. I'm afraid in your, you, you are in a different profession. Actually, you would have been a great, uh, you know, person in making people motivated and active with the quizzes and make it interactive. Thanks for Thank this. It's, a, it's a good break in between. I think switch on to, I, I want to go to Mr. VK Singh. I think, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Augustus talked about the tech high. You see, here is a power grid, which is also technology in a way, but service oriented, you have a lot of workforce. Sir, in the current context, when you're talking about, you know, as a professional, I'm asking you, uh, where remote working is become the order of the day, they, can, they have to frame their own rules and guides, it can't be uniform rules by the government. So the work state, workplace has been extended, as GP was saying earlier, from, the, from office to the extension of notional employment of theory, Tomorrow, in a, in, in a different sense, is extended to the to the to your home. Now, apart from or from any other remote place, you don't have to go to office. You work from somewhere. So, in this context, the personal touch, what HR and leaders were talking earlier, how do you still manage it? High tech, but the high touch, he may not be high touch, but at least they need to be a touch, or touch can be due to a virtual touch. How can you make this balance? Is there any? Thing which you would like to throw any perspective very briefly, sir? Yeah, I told you in the beginning also that uh, physical and emotional safety is the most, creating a safe place is most, though what we try to, I mean, I mean the emotional comes when you, what you do physically, that gives emotional safety. I tell you a few example that uh, we realized that probably it would be very difficult to if people, a uh, large number of people are stuck with COVID, it will be difficult to manage. Then uh, we started our own uh, isolation centers at many places in India because they're working pan India, almost 50, 50 kilometers we have presence. So uh, we started our own isolation center up till third level of treatment, at least up till oxygen meter, oxygen concentrated, we provided actually. So that people felt safe that in case anything comes, they will be taken care of by the company. Don't worry about it. Only the okay. ICU part or ventilator, uh, we could not do. I mean, it's not possible for us to do. But rest of three part, we could take care. And uh, not only in Gurgama, but all over India and most of the places, we assured people that in Run. case you have any problem, this facility will reach you. And... Uh, uh, in terms of all medical, we said uh, there'll be, I mean, uh, no bar. Wherever you find, then be, I mean, today I'm grappling with this issue all over India. And uh, we are enabling people to get admission. I tell you, we have, uh, have a large workforce. So we have about 35 people who are stuck with COVID and uh, 19 employees and some family members. And, uh, but uh, giving them a safety uh, that, uh, in case of any up to third level of treatment, we'll take care of you. Then okay. like we'll, uh, even if you have to take uh, ambulance, uh, my man will uh, book it, pay, pay for it so that you don't need to bother. I mean, uh, we made sure that uh, there's a, each day there's a calling from HR to all the people who are affected and uh, taken good care of them. That is the one thing. That's how you build physical and emotional safety. And this is time actually, uh, for employer also do extra extra mile. I mean, both need to do extra mile at this time of crisis uh, and time to infuse uh, more energy. And this is right. a real testing time for relationship. I think it's a time when you can build very good relationship. That's what mm -hmm. we are seeing that kind of cooperation we are getting from people. And I told you that we are in a 24 into seven business. Yeah. We need people at call, a back and call, and they are there to support you. I and mean, that is the most important. Yeah. Well, so you we well never found support of any person lacking people come forward on their own and uh, so you said that because this, this kind of culture it takes time to build that we have built in last 20 30 years the culture of can do that we can do anything we moved into telecom we did it well and as a transmission company today we are the second largest transmission company in the world country yeah. i mean transmitting more than 50 percent of the country's power and with a per person contribution about four by each employee contribute 
nearly four crores of rupees and nearly one crore of profit. So we made Th them realize that we are there for you. We'll take care of you. Don't worry. Sure, sure sir. Thank we'll you. Go beyond policy, beyond any mechanism, and help okay. you out. Okay. Thank you very much. I think you know you covered it. Uh, you see, uh, one of the myths which have been busted through this uh, COVID situation is that. You know, earlier, unless you have a direct connect, whether you do an interview, whether you do a performance assessment or anything else or social networking can happen only when you have a personal touch. No doubt social medias and others were helping to a large extent. But this is a one case, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you should be aware. Now even the board meetings are happening for last three months in a virtual. All the transactions are happening, resolutions are happening without any personal touch. I'm not saying that should be the ideal order of the day. There is high tech. No doubt we are trying to bring that touch also, what some of them Mr. Singh has alluded. But I think, you know, the myth has been busted. I think you, you have to have a hybrid approach in the current context. One last question to you, um, uh, Mrs. Uma. Since uh, GP has shown that slide before a handover to them, and uh, one asked general question in the end to all of you on the MSMEs. Uh, is what are the very quickly what are the key competencies required to become a successful IR, ER, or people's manager at this context? Uh, given these all these factors, because the rules of the game have changed, the pitch has changed, the bowlers have changed, the boundary management has gone. So it's very important at this stage. Uh, what are the key competencies? Can you spell out some of the things as a leadership level? Uh, what are the key competencies, especially from ER and IR perspective? Thank you, sir. Um, the question, uh, you know, is, is a very intriguing one because uh, it is so dynamic in the current situation. But one thing emerges very clearly. It is not enough to quote the sections of law and talk about the various acts to get away uh, from uh, taking action. Also, you know, we have to really question the uh, techniques of delaying things, uh, keeping all the information close to the chest, etc., which at one point in time were very, very good ways of actually handling it, perhaps. But I think today's time is about openness, more communication, constant communication. Number two, relationship building. Very important. More things can be resolved through relationship building than with the provision of law. If you actually look at the Way things, the way things are changing, you cannot apply Section 9A for everything and start going to the drawing board for that. You have to start you know, relying heavily on relationship management so that the day-to-day -day changes that are happening can be accommodated and we are very flexible to meet the requirement of the organization. Organization has to survive, then people survive. People have to do well, then only organization survives. Very clearly that's not. The second important thing I feel is people to develop in integrated thinking. That integrated thinking is not just about, uh, you know, how to be compliant, but also how to create value. I think this is going to be one of the most important things that ERIR should think about. You know, looking at output-based contracts, looking at utilizing your own people who are playing, playing fully, uh, as opposed to looking at third parties where it's not necessary. Relooking your policies, health policies. You know, we are giving the Tabasura uh, Kashayam to people. We're giving Zincovit to people. This is not seen as an expenditure. It should be seen as an investment. But, so how do you actually bargain in a way that you keep health, safety topmost, relationship topmost, cost topmost, and efficiency very well? And not just keep talking about the provisions of law. That is given. You have to operate as per law. But that cannot be the focal point for discussions, I believe, now. Thank you very much. Very well said. I like the two things which you highlighted. Integrated thinking uh, and the, you know, the, and the survival of the organization and the people, they are interrelated. I think, you know, it's more seen as an investment than a cost. I just want to end up this session at this stage, leaving that one question to all the three later. How, what is the message you want to give it to MSMEs uh, later? But one of the things which I noticed here is authenticity. We talked about the trust. We talked about the culture. What GP has just taken out very clearly, emotional wellness, business continuity plan. These are the become important than just mere cost alone or profit alone. I mean, companies have to make a profit. They need to be profiteering. 
uh, there are many challenges. Some of them are faced. Some of the questions may come up. How do you manage if somebody's salary cut or there is a layoffs or something? But authenticity, empathy, and corporate compassion is very important. You know, as you said very well, there is no such a nine year at this stage. It's a more understanding. That is the litmus test for a good relationship management. Uh, and now this is what it is. Uh, GP, when I have the questions, uh, how do you want to handle? Yeah, we got uh, many questions. Uh, people have been feeding questions. Uh, I can share with you, or uh, you want me to uh, read uh, out? I can... uh, or I, I have which what you said. I can yeah, yeah. want me to pick it up. Uh, yes, I can take some of them here, and yes, then. Sir. Uh, so I think we need to have a. A uh, little bit um, quick answers, uh, if, yes, I, if yes, you don't yes. mind. One of the questions, with, with a compulsion to reduce cut salaries, how can you keep the employees motivated and engaged? Um, anyone want to try, um, Mr. Augustus? Or anyone, I mean, I mean, one quick answer, rapid fire. I can take that. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, the, the question here is, you know, it's important to communicate why you're doing what you're doing. It's not just that you've got a sword in your hand and you're cutting it. You must explain to people why you have had to resort to this kind of a, a, a situation where it is about survival. And only if you are in the game, you can play the game. If you're not in the game, you cannot play the game. So I think the communication is a key and instilling trust is a key and also such exercises should not be sporadically done to one section of people you know if it is an organization call it should be demonstrative across the organization so that people trust okay thank you uh, very well said uh, another question with working from home as new normal don't you all think india need to come with a basic national rules and guidelines for working from home uh, I think we've answered it uh, in a way because uh, you see the the point is don't expect everything coming from the rules framed by the government and organization. You need to build your own rules. What is com convenient and comfortable and which is works for your teams. So there is no one size fits all. As GP said at some stage, even in the same organization at different establishments, sometimes you need to add adaptability. As I said. Three years are important. Adoptability, alignment, and and uh, you know uh, the agility to do it is more important. How we could be agile to switch to the new normal is something you know which we should think. We would never would have thought it would have taken one year to put a plan, but we need to do it in one or two year, days, as Mr. V K Singh said earlier. Uh, how he switched over, how IBM switched over, how Ashok Leyland helped. So. Uh, was the new normal while dealing with IR to be very specific unions and associations? Was the new normal while dealing with IR to be very specific to unions, associations? I, any question, anyone uh, which want a quick answer? I think personally, I feel, I mean, people can answer, but they know the capacity of time. It's not a union's association. It, again, it depends on the trust and the leadership and the culture you have built in. As Mr. Singh said, unions have come forward, helped, and it happens. I mean, I've seen many cases, just to anecdote and move forward. There was 84, there was a huge crisis at some stage. There was a curfew in, in Punjab. One of our factories where have been associated for long. People said, we don't go home. Is a curfew, we'll stay here because other stuff cannot come. We never force them, ask them. That comes from within. That is the litmus test of a good culture and a value-based leadership. I think this is, the, this is something you know, which uh, uh, we should bear in mind. You can't invest at that stage when you need it. It has to come from a long-term investment, build relationships. Um, uh, Dwarka, I, Dwarka, there was a question we got in advance. So we have to give importance to that question uh, yeah. from Ashok Arya. What are the uh, suggestions of the panelists to help organizations to switch from IR to HR era? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, uh, Mr. Arya is a very learned person. Um, uh, I think he is. Uh, anyone would like to answer I, IR to... Well, 
Let me try uh, to. Uh, Alok, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, the, I think the first thing there, uh, from I had to HR to use your own words, uh, is uh, the ability to listen. Listen to those different channels that we are having today. Okay, and 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 we've had unions as a channel of listening. We have various other forums. But today, the most important channel of listening is social media. Okay, and uh, for the new IR or HR person, what is most important as a competency is analytics. Is his analytical ability to read the data that is out there on social media, be it Glassdoor, Facebook, or whatever, and gain sentiment analytics out of it. What is the trend? Understand the trend apply that trend and see how it's going to impact your program policies as well as if it's in alignment with your strategic objectives. So I think those, those are some of the steps, maybe not everything. Uh, this is my take. Thank you. Anyone want to add anything there? Okay, let's, let's move on. Uh, GP, if you have any questions, you can also call out. Uh, one of the questions uh, which is uh, which has come is, uh, 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 you know, uh, in terms of um, contours of post-COVID economy, suggested new framework of employment. What changes do you think would think happen now? It is uh, also do you think there would be boom of gig economy? I think this yeah. is one question we we kept it for the uh, to come from the audience is a very good question. Uh, you know, we, we talked about the workforce, uh, work, uh, nature of work, and uh, people. Uh, you know, this is one thing, you know, anybody would you like to talk about among the panelists about this question? Do you think there is a change and the gig force will become the order of the day with the remote working, part-time working, which was not very well accepted earlier? Uh, anyone, a quick comment on this is a very good con contours of post-COVID economy suggest new framework employment. I think it's greater career mobility, okay? Uh, and uh, there is going to be more innovation and entrepreneurship, okay? So that is going to fuel the gig economy or the gig workforce. I also have to tell the HR people here that uh, there is a culture of always on, right? Always on is because your line between home and work is so blurred. So people generally tend to have the always on kind of a system, okay? And that is important also to drive productivity and to drive innovation. Last but not least is the emergence of a workforce which is called the essential workforce. Okay, the essential workforce is uh, the, those people who have to keep the lights on, who have to ensure that the machinery is running, who has to ensure so many things are happening. And what is it that needs to be done for the essential workforce, whether it is another insurance policy or so many other things. And again, it is the beauty of care in terms of how the employer responds to their uh, typical concerns. And the point that you asked me to make uh, uh, on this particular thing is that, uh, will there be a framework? I think the government is already working. Uh, at least the government of Karnataka had meetings with us to uh, outline a framework for the, uh, for the gig workforce. This is pre-COVID days, but I'm sure that is uh, gaining momentum and very soon we will see uh, we will see legislation around uh, the gig workforce, gig economy, as well as, you know, uh, uh, as well as, uh, uh, you know, other, other uh, labor law issues. But I would say that uh, in the future, uh, it's really not about that section nine or anything like that. It's again about the culture of. Okay. Uh, Thank I, you. Sir, yeah, I want please. to make a point if you don't mind. Yeah, please, please. Yeah. So one thing, uh, two things here, uh, Augie said it uh, bang on. Two things more from the manufacturing context, flexible manpower arrangements have to be really high going forward. We cannot afford to have uh, more full-time, uh, completely full-time hires. So how do we develop the ability to have flexible manpower, which can be ramped up and ramped down depending on the production that we have? So that is one thing that is going to happen. Certainly, I have a, uh, I'm sure that the gig economy will take off. The belief that people can work from home has come now. In normal circumstances, this would never have happened. Because this has happened, the belief is now greater that people can work from home. 
And therefore, you see a lot of companies are closing down their offices and probably will also go towards hiring gig workers for specialist assignments, as we have been doing with outsource. The third point I want to bring to the table is, I certainly see this as a good news for women uh, who are in the out there. You know, this has actually created a belief that you can work remotely and from home. And therefore, I believe that a lot of women will find it more encouraging. In the and employers will also be happy to hire more women uh, given this context, which was otherwise a big barrier in the earlier times. And the statistics shows that 27 or 24 percent, I think, of the world's gig work happens from India, and of which 61 percent are women. So I think it's a great story for women to emerge, and companies need to capitalize on this very well. I, I'm sorry I couldn't have resisted saying this point, Oria. Uh, I'm glad that you said it. I'm glad that you said it. Uh, you know, one of the things, you know, which is one of the questions, I think here I put it as supplementary. One of you can quickly answer it. Will it become the order of day? This has become a normal style of working. Then there will be resistance from the workmen, from the employees to come to the office or to any other place because they are used to this style of working even when there is a need. Uh, is there, will be there any resistance to change? This is a question which has been asked. Uh, any comments by anybody very quickly? I, I think, you know, you people have said it very well. Communicate, communicate, communicate. I mean, if you communicate the purpose why you are doing, people would be sensible that resistance to change is dwindling. But unless there is a, some other political compulsions in terms of union management, which always can arise. But having said that, if you have that, you know, Uma, I, I'm glad that you build that point, especially without sounding, I'm gender, I'm gender agonist, but you know, um, yeah, I, uh, you know, but it's very important point what you made. Uh, the other point, you know, which I think I will ask, while employers struggling to maintain cash flows and asking HR to remove the job to manage a case, how we can create trust and confidence with employees with a brand image in the market? I think we have already answered, all of you have said it, trust and culture and all that. So I don't want to go into it. One specific question uh, from a PS, PSU, sir, Mr. V.K. Singh, you may like to um, attempt it. In PSU, a communication matrix has been developed to manage ERIR. Are unions and associations happy with the kind of new normal that is virtual interface in communication? So what does he want to know, actually? Yeah. I think it's more of a information what is the question, to you than what, a uh, what does he want to know? I, I think apparently there is some okay. guidelines issued for the PSU yes. industries in regarding communication, to how to develop matrix. matrix no, no, no. There, there's no, no guidelines, actually. You can okay. give in your own way. Oh, sure. As far as union handling is concerned, uh, you can deal in your your own way. We are okay. in touch with almost all unions, okay. so it's not an issue actually. Fine. And one, now one last question to the panelists, uh, very quick, rapid, and then uh, we need to hand over. If there's any questions, we'll we'll take it up. But I thought this is one question which is important. Uh, what is the message? You have a lot of experience. You know, we talk about Leylands, we talk about Power Grid, we talk about IBM, we talk about. Uh, uh, GSK and all other big companies, uh, brand image, culture, building, and so on. It's fine. But they said a lot of MSMEs ha have asked this question. What is one message you want to give it to us? How do you manage this crisis? You can afford to pay salaries. You can motivate them. You can communicate them. How do we deal with this, number one? Secondly, we don't have such a talented HR professionals. We can't afford to have. And so I want to club both the questions. How, what is one message we can give it to all these professional bodies who are go, come together today, be it ISTD, NIPM, DMA, NI, NHRD, and other, other associations? Uh, what is one message you need to give? Firstly, what is our message to MSMEs? If you can have a quick round with all of you on people issues. So we are working with lots of MSMEs, sir. Auto mm. Automotive industry, as you know, is heavily reliant on yeah. them and they on us. We've, uh, when we go down, they go down as well. 
some of the things that uh, you know are happening in this space which we've tried as well is actually uh, you know uh, obtain a government support for them to our own lobbying so that some uh, some degree of it is handled over there a lot of things sometimes payments have become a big issue as you know we've actually worked despite our own cash flow systems we've tried to make the payments to uh, many of the people who are working with us at least in part to keep them going over there we have actually extended support to their staff their drivers their uh, people etc by you know through some uh, generous donations as well as through food etc that we've given i think this is a time where one one idea cannot uh, pervade everything there have to be many many ways in which we have to work and tell them that you know what both are together in this and you know we're not going to just leave you like a hot potato just because this situation has come so little bit give and take ex extending some expertise etc and another thing through this medium i think all the bodies should tell that many of us are available to do some work gratis wherever these people want you know Good i mean point. we're more than happy to extend our support to them and uh, devote some time to see how they can actually uh, make use of some of this so this is something that i would share sir very well said i think uh, is great session um uh, mr augustus yeah uh i think in addition to what uma said it's about building covid resilience prepare for the next perfect storm how are you going to be preparing it either with your cash flow or with various other things but most importantly people from your workforce management perspective i think you need to have an a b and c a uh, category of workforce okay so one would be essential one would be so not essential and one would come in you know when the others are probably infected or something like that i think uh, we are all you know in the same storm but traveling in different boats so building resilience is so important and one of the needs is to be very agile bring in agile management principles and design thinking that will enable you to adapt very quickly to a fast changing environment thank wonderful. you wonderful. thank you wonderful very well said uh, mr vk singh so my suggestion would be that this is a time for soft picture and survival of the fittest yeah is a word i would say that is a uh creating a stable workplace is the most important thing thank you very much sir um i think before i hand over to the organizers i need to immensely thank all the panelists uh, on behalf of the entire uh, viewers delegates organizers i mean it's a, for me it's a very enriching very insightful experience i i know it's futile to sum it up but i need to um, just for the sake of key takeaways i need to say i think it's a, a crisis brings people together there is a need to collaborative effort this is culture building is not one day process there are different strokes for different people there is no one size fit all if you don't keep measuring you are just practicing you need to embrace the art of tough love tough on tough on issues but soft on people Uh, you need to balance between lives and livelihood this can be done only when you have an authentic leadership uh, coupled with compassion and uh, passion to do well uh, the last bit which uh, you know mr mr augustus has said is important three there are many competencies as required as mr o, Ms., mrs uma has alluded and what mr singh has shared from his rich experience and the, and the framework of the emotional well being by mr augustus i would say the uh, agility the ability to be agile and you know you need to have this alignment with the people ultimately customers are important uh, you know if you have this three aspect three years it will be wonderful last but important gsk has always believed in quality cost delivery work environment and people all have to together uh, there could be many things which couldn't have been covered there's a gig workforce there's a if we have the migrant labor but the government has got the laws but never been implemented it's a pathetic situation where we need to help and contribute i'm very glad to hear from these distinguished panels they are willing to offer 
you know, pro bono to help the MS, MSMEs as need arise, but, you, but they need to be channeled through some of these professional bodies, be it any one of them who are very capable of doing it. I think we should not neglect what we are talking about, 10% of the labor, but there are many unorganized labor, be it a casual, be it a bit self-employed or distressed, or is it like a driver or, or anyone else, agricultural labor and so many. We have not really looked into it, but at least what we do to MSME sector, which is a part of your supply chain, as uh, Umaji has alluded, I think it's very important we should not neglect. Ultimately, you need to take care of yourself, self, and then your, your team, and then your business and your organization. I think this is the balance we need to it. To end up, there are four kinds of people people who do not know what's happening, people to whom things happen, and people who watch things happen, but distinguished minority are those who make things happen. I wish we are in this distinguished minority, and we are minority to make things happen. And this is the balance between lives and livelihood. And really it's a great honor to be a part of this team. And thanks audience for listening to us and bearing with us. I know we were not here to give any solutions, but we have only tried to give some experiences and insights. Still, it may not be exhaustive, but anyone would like to seek any views from anyone, I'm sure people would help you to answer you to or learn from you rather than just trying to give some gyan. With this, can I just hand over to Dr. G.P. Rao, please? Thank you. Thank you, Dwarka, for a wonderful moderation and a wonderful summing up the whole thing. Now, friends, uh, we have a nice job of uh, uh, working out what are the key, key takeaways. I will just tell you what are the takeaways I have noted down. You don't have to follow me, but this is to trigger your mind. Duty of care, COVID resilience, stay calm, innovate, back to the step one of the hierarchy of Maslow's needs. Compassion, culture, digitization, listening, gig and flexible manpower, work from home unions, communication matrix, lobbying for SMEs, soft HR, collaboration, authentic leaders, art of tough love, and agility alignment with stakeholders. So these are the points I have noted down. You would have noted down many. What we should do is now you can do two things. At the bottom of the screen, there is a reaction button. So it gives you two options. You can clap or you can say like thumbs up. So that you can do or go to the chat box and write one takeaway you have taken. So we'll gather all that and take, give it back to you. So each one writes one takeaway. So we'll have 200 takeaways. So that will be a great thing. We will sum it up and share with you. We have recorded the session. We'll share that with you also. So we'll recorded version will share and all the takeaways people are writing. Wonderful, Ravindra Varma has written, uh, someone written tough flow, remote work, uh, learning adaptability, more opportunities for women. I missed out, but someone has written down. Yeah, wonderful, yeah, listening. Uh, resilience, agile behavior, uh, I only, emotional communication, not just communication. Wonderful. Uh, great. New normal. Yeah. Creative culture. Okay. While well, you're all writing, so to, to respect your time, it is 5.30. So I would request Mr. Uh, Mukesh Jain, uh, please recognize the presence of the presidents and the leaders of all the professional bodies. I saw Dr. Yogesh Mishra. Uh, I'm sure others would be there. And senior people from different bodies were there. I, am, I saw Dr. T. V. Rao was there from NTPC. Mr. Yen Verma was there. Raja was there. I don't know. There are many. I couldn't uh, identify because there are so many screens. I think uh, Mr. Mukesh Jain, you can make a comprehensive vote of thanks. Call all of them as leaders and well-wishers. Yes, over to you. Yeah, good evening, uh, my uh, dear friends. On behalf of NIPM Delhi NCR chapter and ISTD Delhi chapter, I thank you, um, my guru and veteran, Sri P. Dwarganath Garu, who has uh, moderated the session so well 
Thank you, sir. Thank I you. Am thankful to all the esteemed panelists, Shri V K Singh, Director HR Power Grid Corporation of India, Madam Uma Rao, VP HR Ashok Leland, and uh, Mr. Agast uh, Agastas, who who has uh, given uh, so wonderful and so enriching, inspiring and fruitful session to all of us, and moreover. to my friend dr gp rao who has curated this whole session and manages so wonderfully thank you very much dr rao thank you thank always you always helping to me i am sure all of us are benefited out of it i am also thankful to shri prem singh president nhrd delhi ncr chapter dr yogesh mishra president delhi management association Shri Abhay Kapoor, Faridaba, President Faridabad Management Association, for joining hands with us, friends. I am also thankful to the leaders, my seniors of ISTD, NHRD, NIPM, DMA, and FMA. Some uh, friends are from Rotary also. All my seniors and friends for their active. participation and making this event a grand success i once again thank you all to be here in this wonderful evening wish you all a very healthy cheerful and safe future thank you very much thank once you so much thank you. thank you thank you stay safe stay happy stay healthy stay thank you so much everybody thank you dr thank, thank you thank you thank you panelists thank you, thank you to all thank you thank you vinod ji thank you dinesh and thank you thank you very much thank you Thank you, 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 we dinesh ji is a very old colleague of mine yes dc oh, yes, all sir, the three here, panelists responded to your questions very yes, well, very very crisp, well very crisp answers you could cover all the questions you could cover all the points and uh, participants were also very good uh, and, mukesh uh, ji great efforts आप खाली आई एस टी डी में नहीं आप एन आई पी एम का भी अच्छा काम करते हैं आपको शिकायत था कि मुकेश जैन आई एस टी डी का काम करते हैं आप क्या बोला बुला के तो देखो ना ना सो आई मीन रियली ग्रेटफुल टू दैनलिस्ट एंड टू मुकेश जैन जी दिनेश जी एंड डॉक्टर जी पी for curating this brilliantly एंड आई थिंक पैनलिस्ट है वेरी वेल सर वेरी वेल Yeah. No, we had a wonderful audience. Good Under questions. Chairmanship. Uh, oh, no, wonderful. We had participants from uh, Hyderabad. We had from Jabalpur, Mumbai. A uh, lot of people. It's wonderful. Very senior people were there. But uh, anyway, the format didn't allow us to unmute them. But I see a lot of senior people were there in the audience. ISTD uh, past president, very past president, veteran. Dr. Udesh Koli was okay. there. Was there and all. And I saw TV Rao. I saw Raja. Our national uh, player, Tezrar, ISTD Tezrar, Mr. Vadivel is here. Oh, he's there. So, Wonderful. A lot of chapter chairmen are here. Oh, great. And, and I saw and Ashish Gakre, my young friend. And uh, complete, complete team of NIPM is here. Gupta ji, nice. Shantanu ji, Mitra. Oh, Gupta ji, Shantanu, wonderful. Every every. I saw Susan Vargis, very good. Veer Bharat was there, wonderful. So, very, very fulfilling, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, Ian Verma ji was there, NTPC. S N Panigrahi was there. Thank you, much, you know. uh, thank you. wonderful thank session. You. Thank you. Sir. And Gail se bhi kafi senior log the. Yes, sir. Besides Dr. Mitra, there were other people also there. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you so sir. much. Thank I will take leave. Thank, Thank you, leave. sir. Uh, all Thank the professional you. bodies, five professional bodies, ko salute. All the panelists and uh, moderator ko salute. Uh, Thank, Thank you, you Alok, for the IT support. Uh, that was very good because we never had any problem. That's good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Take leave. Thank you. Bye Thank bye. You. Bye bye. Have a great time, sir.
Uh, Alok, now you can close and uh, formally close the session. Leave.